Welcome back to another Dish and Eat My Share. This is right here at the Rant and Share Smoke Up Pork. Excuse for a lucky strike. Sorting out the world's problems and taking care of mama. Well, as I often do on 9-11, it's basically a giant media snow day, right? And, yeah, I'm not knocking on people wanting, especially younger kids, to remember what happened. Like, I was 12 when this shit happened. You know, I think my niece wasn't even born yet. But it becomes a point, like, where it gets a little repetitive, you know? I think anybody in the whole preparedness world and in the history world kind of knows what's up with 9-11, man. Regardless of what your theories are about how things didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So I usually zone out and watch a fucking movie, right? And, you know, I got to thinking, man, what is the one horror movie that absolutely made perfect sense from when the time it was written to the time now, right, when it couldn't happen. <sighs> Figured out I'd hit the pause button to cough there. These zigzag papers aren't really the bee's knees. <clears throat> but anyway, I don't know if most of you have seen this or not. It's called Phone Booth, right? It's an interesting concept. This dude... He's cheating on his old lady, and he's kind of some scumbag ad, ad and marketing executive, you know, like, he's in the entertainment industry. You know, them scumbags that all, uh, probably go fly to Epstein Island together. And this one guy, who's a little disgruntled, wants him to tell the truth, you know? Wants him to tell the wife about the girlfriend, the girlfriend about the wife. I think we've all been there, right? <sighs> But he's in a phone booth, right? If he hangs up the phone, dude's going to blast his ass. And, you know, of course, he's got, I think he describes the, the Winchester Model 700, right? It, it, maybe it's a Remington 700. I, I can't remember. The, the Model 70 and the, the 700 are, like, so damn similar to one another. You know? Uh, it's just old world bolt action technology, right? And he's talking about the carbon fiber mods on it and, you know, the suppressor he's got on it, which I think even at that time in New York, a suppressor was a no-no. <sighs> but, you know, it brings up the interesting ethical question, right? You know, in a crowded city street, somebody pops off around from far enough away and it's noisy and chaotic and whatnot and... You know, somebody gets nailed, like, where do you know where the shot came from, right? It's kind of a thing. It's what they've used for years and years and years to kind of demonize suppressor technology and whatnot. And it's only in the modern age suppressors became a thing. And I'll tell you another thing, man. That movie was probably the death of the phone booth. Like... People were legit afraid to go in phone booths when I was a kid, and I don't think it had so much to do with the movie it's so much because, uh, like, you know, they're dirty places that homeless people use for a urinal, you know, or, or people use to go score drugs in big cities anyway. Yeah, out here in the country, you know, they don't put up with that sort of bullshit. There are still pay phones around. Uh, I haven't seen one in a long time. I know where there's at least two of them at gas stations, you know, in the downtown area where I used to frequent when I was homeless, I know, because I used to have to make a collect call every once in a while and I didn't have change. That's a thing of the past too, isn't it, man? Pay phones. Remember having to leave the kid, you know, house as a kid with like a buck in your pocket, you know, so you can make a phone call if you had to, emergency. I'm just old enough, I barely remember that. In fact, my first cell phone I had to pay for myself, you know, I didn't and nowadays, that technology is kind of redundant, man. England's turned all of its pay phones into, like, little library kiosks and things like that, the big red boxes. Or, you know, nerds in the United States will buy them up as, uh, you know, Doctor Who memorabilia, you know, shit like that. I never really got into Doctor Who. Like, it just wasn't my thing. I do like a lot of British TV, you know. But, yeah... You know, uh, the movie Phone Booth, right? You know, that scared the shit out of everybody. Oh, there's some crazy guy with a rifle and a suppressor, and if you don't do whatever, you know, he's going to blap your ass, you know? 
you imagine a lot of people were afraid to get in phone booths after that. Just like with the movie Jaws, right? How many people were afraid to get in the fucking ocean? And by the way, uh, bonus points for those of you that know where Jaws came from, the story Jaws. Guess what? Jaws came from a great white shark in 1916, New Jersey, right? Atlantic City. He'd eaten kids and pets and other things, and he'd swam up a canal for whatever reason. And they actually caught the little son bitch and killed him. You know, it was big publicity back in the day. And people were afraid to get in the fucking water after that. You know? And you have to wonder, you know, is reality more scary than the fiction? Because eventually the fiction becomes reality, right? Now, I don't know of any instance where somebody was shot in a payphone you know, like in this scenario, but you have to wonder in the years after, would there be some copycat that's like, yeah, I like this movie, I'm going to do this shit, because you know how crazy people think. <sighs> ah, these flies are vicious today, man. But you have to remember, you know, like after... You know, Columbine, how many of those fucking copycat things and how many, you know, of these, uh, what do you call it, you know, mass shooting incidents occurred, you know, after Parkland or Sandy Hook or whatever else, you know, and you have to wonder how the media really feeds into this, you know, both on TV and, you know, the news as well as like popular culture, like in movies. Right? Because, you know, that film Elephant White, it's an HBO special or whatever. It was a production years and years ago. It was, like, loosely based on Columbine, man. You know, like the Rampage franchise. You know, there, there were three of them, right? Bill Williams, you know, like... Everybody was, like, obsessed with the guy when those movies came out. Because, you know, like he was the anti-hero, man. The anti-establishment guy. And if you pay attention, a lot of these movies are pretty fucking anti-gun. <sighs> like, you ever see Falling Down? Right? One of the best movies ever. Yeah, I have no idea who the fuck Call of Man Vermont. I ain't even answering that shit. But, like, in that movie, you know, like, the guy's the bad guy, right? And he's using all the bad guy guns to do things, and, you know, Robert Duvall, you know, ends up wasting his ass. But a lot of these movies from this time period are, like, super fucking anti-gun, right? You know, the bad people are using the guns, and the cops are there to protect you from the bad people with the guns, you know? But here's the thing. In New York City, it's been illegal for over 100 years because the goddamn Sullivan Act to even carry a firearm without a permit. Because you need one from the state and one from the city. And there's about five people that have the city and state permit in New York to carry a handgun. And that is... One of them is Donald Trump. Yeah, I know. That's some shit, isn't it? But I digress, man. It's just been a, another media snow day beating the flies off me and everything else. Uh, Mom's painting her little artworks today, so I just basically have to babysit. So as always, uh, it's another daily bullshit with Joe. And uh, until we meet again, these flies can eat my shorts.